Hey everybody, when I made my video last week about, you know, showing, you know, that I was working in the backup control room and everything and how they're sort of splitting our crew up and stuff, uh, some of my friends from ABC and NBC that I worked with in California suggested that I make a more detailed video kind of explaining, you know, more about kind of what it is I do and how our industry has changed. You know, back in the day when I was coming up, it took like big crews and big studios and lights and all this big stuff in order to put on a, a you know a professional news broadcast but the industry has changed you know due to automation and you know sort of other factors where there's sort of less of us and we actually do more tasks than we used to back then so we'll handle multiple things at the same time so anyway per your request I'm gonna go ahead and make this quick little video kind of showing you sort of behind the scenes of you know what it is I do to work do what I do at work uh, at Fox and at the end I guess I'll even include a little bit of live footage of us actually doing a real news broadcast here in Dallas Texas so sit back and enjoy okay this is the nine o'clock news broadcast I call this the quiet before the storm <laughs> This is usually when it's just silent for the, a minute before we actually hit air. And they're going to be counting down into my headset here telling me exactly when to take air. We're one minute away. So right off the bat, we got four tapes or videos playing off a server. They're not tapes anymore. They play off a server. Three are VOs. One's an SOT. And we're going to come out to a two-shot. So here we go. And then, oh, then right into weather. All right, stand by, everybody. 30 seconds. Fifteen. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, up on, up on A. Today's high temperature was in record territory. Now get out of the jacket next. once again. It will be freezing cold and windy this weekend. QSTP. Some area school districts are looking for parents to volunteer and take the place next. of teachers and staff who are all out sick See with for COVID. Heather. Q. State leaders in parts of the Northeast report the okay, fast Omicron SOT surge next. has peaked or is very close to it. Sound so, well, the very good news, I have been waiting a long time to be able to say this. So, turning the corner on the winter surge. Thank you. Here for you. Right, open. First at 9, Fox 4 News starts now. And talking about a winter surge, it is going to feel a lot different outside in a few short right, hours. Hello, weather. everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. And I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Windy down. and cold pretty much describes how we will start the weekend in the morning, which will include some freezing temperatures, but it's a nice 66 degrees out there right now. Get out and take a walk before it gets here. Fox Force Chief Meteorologist Dan Henry. Dan. Yeah, you're right, exactly on, Danny. right. That cold front is knocking on our door literally at this hour. It's now through Wichita Falls. Came through Vernon a couple of right, hours ago. We got a uh, VO for Heather out of weather here. 50 miles an hour with blowing dust. Amarillo saw wind gusts over 60 miles an hour when the front came through there. Temperature there is at 40. It's 44 in Oklahoma City. And at least for the time being, we're in the 60s here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. There's a look at temperature cast. That okay. front blows into the Metroplex probably shortly after midnight. By wake up tomorrow, we'll be in the mid 30s with wind chills in the upper teens. Okay, other next one, Steve's going to take us to Peyton. And I don't think those temperatures are going to rise much more than a couple, maybe few degrees between early morning and the afternoon. There's a look at our wind forecast under a wind advisory right through tomorrow with winds that could gust at times. Yeah, we get it, Dan. It's going to be cold as hell. Miles an hour. <laughs> There's a look as well at what could be a few flurries flying in the air across parts of North Not Texas. So. We'll talk more in detail about that. I'll track down the expanse that this winter storm is going to have across the country and right, let you know out. how long this chilly air will be sticking around. All that and more in your seven-day forecast coming up. 
Thank you. All right, Dan, thank you. Meantime, the city of Dallas will open its homeless shelter starting Steve's tomorrow. Next, taking us to Payton. Weather, city-run shelters, a United Methodist Church, and the nonprofit Our Calling She's will got all a package. accept anyone who needs a warm place to sleep. Mesquite and Birdville ISDs are two of the latest suburban school districts okay, forced come, to Payton. close campuses because too many teachers and staff are sick. Both districts will be closed until Thursday. Another district, Richardson ISD, has not closed campuses, but is asking parents to pitch in on campus. Fox News Peyton Yeager has the latest on these stories. Peyton. KQ. Okay, Steve, 38,000 students here in Mesquite will be at home for the next five days. The district says staff was okay, so low it became unmanageable. Up. Meanwhile, other districts across Texas are calling on parents to keep staff on hand. Okay, package is up. This is two Just minutes. feet from the Friday pickup line in Mesquite, parents and their kids wait in line for a COVID test before the holiday weekend. And it's been pretty high. So I figured the next thing was going to be, they was going to shut it down. Shirley Walden's grandchildren are now staying home from school until at least next Thursday. Friday, Mesquite ISD announced with 15% of staff absent, classes on Tuesday and Wednesday are now canceled. And that's what they need to do. That's fine. The district says once it hit this threshold, All right, the ability Payton, to we're coming to camera two on Heather. Became unmanageable. It's probably a good thing. Going to Jason toss Fitzgerald's wife to is a Blake teacher Hansen. in Garland. Garland ISD 30. announced it has no plan to close schools next week. He has a two minute According package According to Garland's as online well. dashboard, a little more than 1,000 students are actively sick, along with 240 employees. But Fitzgerald came to get tested as a precaution. Just to make sure. Richardson ISD, which has a mask mandate in place, is calling on the community to help keep doors open. Parents can't be the bandit. Richardson is asking for parent volunteers to fill staffing gaps. Once parents pass a background check, they can help in areas such minute, as the cafeteria, the front office, and dismissal duties. Richardson ISD mother of three, Blair Taylor, says one of her children came home this week a little upset. And she's like, Mom, everyone is sick. Everyone is sick. Everyone is scared. The teachers are gone or they're also getting sick. I didn't have a teacher for two and a half hours today. Taylor says while she works full time, she might be able to help out at lunch. It's a real mixed bag of like, is this the right decision or is it just the decision that we're desperately trying to make? Some schools in Central 30, Texas are 30. taking a similar approach. Hayes Consolidated ISD and Kyle says it's asking for parents to sign up to substitute. The 30 hour college credit requirement can be waived with the principal's okay, stand approval. By Peyton. The district says this week, 450 subs were requested. Only 40% were Coming able back. to be filled. Meanwhile, back in North Texas, parents are closely watching the numbers over the weekend. I'm sure there's more to come. Thank you. Now, the state's COVID reporting for schools is always a week delayed, but last week, All the right, first Heather, week back, back from you. winter break, almost 12,000 staff members tested positive for COVID-19. These are numbers we did not see during the Delta surge. Also last week, 26,000 Texas, Texas students tested positive for COVID-19, and we will have to wait till next week to find out the numbers from this week. Stephen Heather, back to you. All right, Peyton, Peyton Yeager, live in Mesquite, Mesquite High School. Thank you. Okay, Heather. The patients listed as hospitalized us to Blake. with COVID-19 in North Texas ticked upward again today. However, there was some improving news among the youngest patients. Fox Sports' Blake Hansen has the very Next latest up. on hospitalizations. Blake. Yeah, Heather, some parts of the country are right. beginning to see He's got a two minute package. that Omicron's peak, but hospitals across Texas say they still need more help. Take and roll. Reinforcements are here. JPS Hospital shared Friday that 49 traveling nurses and respiratory right, therapists have arrived to help tackle the them. Omicron surge. They are some of the 1,000 arriving in North Texas to help hospitals that have staff going out sick and more sick patients coming in. Though there is some improvement on the pediatric front. Cook Children's, which reported at a record high 69 COVID patients hospitalized Wednesday, saw the number drop to 42. Okay, that looks like they're going to float 173. Could be weeks away. 173 is floating. Any higher for COVID. What, what I hear from the epidemiologist we now have three videos, three, three, three tapes in the so that holds true, tease. Then unfortunately, I come back to you and tell you we have a higher number. 
Hospitals are Not reporting the that highest Jeff number up. of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 in North Texas since right, January little, of last year. little sports year. thing here about the Though Cowboys. Hospitals nationwide have reported varying percentages of people One left in the who package. are hospitalized for other reasons and test positive while there. Regardless, hospital workers in Texas say they are overwhelmed. They're coming to the ambulance, coming to the ambulance, coming to, and then they keep coming through the door. So we we cannot stop them and say the doors are closed because of uh, all right we got jeff in reason. position yeah, he's ready to wreck we can't stop them even though there's no room although the state of texas is in the middle of out. out four thousand extra hospital staffers all right statewide, after we come back from blake steve's got a couple of uh, COVID updates in the san antonio area a bipartisan group of lawmakers said governor sound on the a second letter Friday for steve thanking the state for 400 health care workers but asking for even more and the ICUs are very busy to begin with. So you pair that with these COVID patients, an influx of often critical patients, and sometimes you find shortages Stand by, coming back. in all ICUs, not even just COVID, because these nurses are being pulled from critical different areas patients. to take this care of these critical queue. patients. Okay, cue them. The percentage of people testing positive has leveled off to some degree over the last few days, but still remains around a pandemic okay, Steve, high turn. of 36%. Heather? All right, Blake, thank you. All right, so Blake mentioned Omicron possibly peaking in other parts of the country. It's true. sound off this York, next one. Places. Governor Kathy Hochul was excited to declare the number of new COVID infections in New York City and across her state are declining fast. Hochul also says COVID hospitalizations are stabilizing with a daily average of about 12,000. She says the state COVID positivity rate has dropped to 16% after a high of 23% on January 3rd. One week ago today, New York State's daily case report was 90,000. Here's the news flash. Turning the corner. You heard it here first. I've been waiting to say that. Turning the corner. Look at the seven day average of cases starting to decline. 47,000, 49,000, 27 cases yesterday. Our highest point was how long ago? One week ago. Highest to lowest in a week thus far, and that lowest is gonna to continue to go down. The governor and all health officials are, of course, reminding people to be vigilant. Others next. Other parts of the Northeast report similar 154, trends, COVID test website. York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. In New Jersey, the state's seven-day average for new positive cases is down about 17% from a week ago. Well, starting Cute. January 19th, that's next Wednesday, Americans will be able All to right, begin Steve's order gonna take us to uh, Jeff Cole test next kits. Sports. The president announced Cowboys. December 21st, and they would be provided for free. The website to order is covidtests.gov. The White House says the test will then be mailed within a week to 12 days after ordering. So that means the first tests, if all goes well, will be delivered about the end of January or early February. Supplies are limited to just four free tests per home. Starting tomorrow, private insurance companies will cover over-the-counter at-home testing found at pharmacies and other retailers. You will be entitled to eight at-home tests a month. You're going to have to buy them up front and then get reimbursed from your insurance company. All right, a bit let's of go to sports. Celebration today for the Dallas Cowboys and some players in particular. Three Great of them ahead of Sunday night's wild card playoff game against the 49ers. Tell us about them let's Cowboys. Hope it is not short lived. Hope there is more celebrating. Fox Force Jeff Kolb in tonight with more Jeff. Yes, Steve, Jeff. Dallas doesn't want Sunday to be the season finale. They'll probably need good games from those three guys that today he's got two tapes. First team all pros. Second one sound. That would be right guard Zach Martin, defensive back Trayvon Diggs, and linebacker Micah Parsons. Dallas is one of five teams in the league three elements in the NFL in the this year with three first team all pro selections. All three Cowboys received the most votes at their respective positions as well. Now, this is Martin's fifth time earning first team all pro honors comes after not earning a first or second team All-Pro selection in 2020. It's Diggs' first selection, though. No surprise at all, of course. Trayvon leading the NFL right, with those 11 sound. interceptions this year. And for Parsons, of course, picked 12th overall last year in the draft by Dallas. He's the only rookie this season to be voted a first-team All-Pro. He's the Cowboys' first defensive rookie to ever accomplish the feat and just the fourth linebacker to earn the honor since the 1970 NFL merger. He joins Lawrence Taylor, Patrick Willis, and Darius Leonard. Earlier this week, Micah had this to say about the possibility of being named first team all pro. Okay, sounds like It's an extraordinary team. honor. Uh, it speaks to the work and the position that the Cowboys uh, put me in. 
And, you know, I think it's just a true blessing. And um, Back to camera one. It, it just makes you want to go harder. I think when you achieve things early, um, you got to learn how to sustain it, you know. I always say, um, people always say, you know, people always say when you get there, it gets easier, but I think when you get there, it gets harder because um, once you get it, you got it, but it's hard to sustain it than it is just to get there. Ten so, out. Um, I got to, you know, just keep working and keep getting better and find a way to beat this season next year, which is the harder part. Q. So first team all pro is great, but why stop there? All right, Teases right? next. Micah also named one of six finalists for NFL Rookie of the Year today. We He's go the ABC. only defensive player in the running, and again, the only first team all pro of those finalists. Coming up on Free For All, the fans Bobby Belt will join me with some stats. Might give Cowboys fans some hope heading into the matchup with the Niners. That's right here on Fox 4 at 1030. I'm Jeff Kolb, Fox 4 Sports. All uh, right, Jeff, I think the game was Sunday night. It might end at night, but it starts at 3.30 p.m. The Forest Stock Show and Rodeo gone. This is a pandemic pause. What's new this year? The change is being made because of COVID. E. And some Texas counties are rejecting hundreds of mail-in ballot requests, blaming a new Texas He's next law for Steve. For the reason. Plus, new details C. about the Texas man facing sedition. All right, break is next. The Capitol riot. More Fox 4 News coming up. Three, two, one, out. Okay. Two minutes, 40 second break. All right. Parade's moving along nicely. <laughs> so it's just like that. That's how we do it for two hours <laughs> from 9 to 11 p.m. So there you go. There's your little taste of uh, what it really looks like, how the sausage is made. 